Good morning, everyone. I'm just going to take a minute to give people time to sign on live if they're joining me live. So I'm just finishing up getting my notes ready here. And if anyone does pop on live, if you wouldn't mind telling me if you can hear me, that would be great. <clears throat> so I posted a poll in the group with some topics that we could talk about. So I'm taking the the top two topics that got the most votes, which were about what to write about and how to grow your audience. So I'm just going to wait another minute. I'm going to bring it up on my phone so I can track the comments here. Okay. Well, if you're joining me on the replay, I would just want you to know that you can still ask questions if you have any questions uh, in the comment section, and I will check back later, and I will get uh, answers for you. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start, and we'll see if anyone jumps on live. And if you do join me live, please feel free to say hello um, and uh, ask me any questions. It doesn't have to be questions about the topics that we're talking about just today. You could talk about um, blogging in general. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I also want you to know that I'm going to have a special announcement for this group this weekend on Sunday. And uh, I'll just, it won't be a live announcement. I'll just be posting something on Sunday. So hopefully you can tune in Sunday and see what the new special announcement is. It's something very exciting. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the first topic, which is what to write about. Because I think that's, um, that's what plagues us all, right? <laughs> you start a blog <clears throat> and you may have a few ideas of what you want to write about the first few weeks, but then how do you keep it going month after month after month, year after year, right? So, the first thing that you have to think about is what type of blog you have and why you're blogging. So there are a number of reasons that people start blogs. So some of them, a lot of people in this group are supporting a business that they own. They have a, a small business where they're handmade entrepreneurs or they're service professionals. They offer some kind of service or they're coaches and they have a blog to support that. But there are other reasons to have a blog too. Some people want to showcase their writing skills or their photography or they want to have an online store or offer classes or um, they use it to market their books that they've written. You know, there's a number of reasons why you want to start a blog. So when you're thinking about the things, the types of things that you want to write about. Hi, Teresa. Thank you for joining me. Excellent video yesterday. Very proud of you. <laughs> Hi, Marilyn. Thank you for joining as well. Hi, James. Thank you for joining. <laughs> so we're just getting started. We're, we're dealing with the first topic, which is what to write about. So what I was saying is there are a number of reasons why um, you start a blog. So when you start thinking about the types of things that you want to write about, you need to know why you're blogging in the first place. So if it's supporting a business, you want to talk about your business and the things that are important to your business and uh, why you started the business in the first place. And you can talk about your products. You can talk about uh, things that are on topic for your target audience. Maybe you have um, a business where you have skincare and you have dry skin, so you've in invented products for uh, people with eczema or something like that. So they're the types of things that you can write about. So really think about the why that you're blogging and it'll help you start coming up with ideas. And then the next thing that you want to do is come up with categories for your blog. And you don't want to be writing about all over the place. You want to keep yourself on topic and on brand. So just come up with about four or five categories that you want to write about consistently and things that you have enough to say about consistently. So you might have a category that's all about your products or you might have a category that is about your backstory or 
if your products are vegan, you might have a category that's about vegan lifestyle, something like that. So just come up with four or five that pertain to your business in particular. If you're a coach, they might be. If you're a relationship coach, you might have um, categories that are about being single or being married or being divorced or you know whatever pertains to your particular area. So that come up with those four or five categories and it, it tries to streamline your blog to be about exactly what you want it to be about and how you're going to hit your target audience. And then it kind of keeps you from wandering away. You don't want to write about, you know, if you're a business coach and you're talking about business topics all the time, you don't want to start talking about recipes and things like that. You know what I mean? You want to stay on brand. Um, and if you make products, you don't want to start talking about, you know, other things. I mean, maybe later down the road, once you build an audience and you realize that there are other topics that are of interest to your people, you might start working them into, into your blog. But in the beginning, especially, you really want to, to narrow focus on what you're talking about. And there are, definitely popular post types that perform consistently well, like how to posts. So if you do make products or um, if you do offer some kind of service or you, you're a fitness coach or something, how to videos are always really popular. And you know, you don't have to give too much away in your how to videos. You don't have to give the secret formula away for your, your skincare or something like that. Um, but a little behind the scenes and, and how you come up, how you come up with the ideas and and how you source your ingredients, things like that, I think are always um, of interest to your readers because if they're interested in what you're doing, they're interested in sort of how you got there in the first place. And another type of article that is popular are list articles. They're very easy to digest for people. You know, so top 10, five reasons why something or, or the top 10, you know, best cookbooks in, you know, like I have a Mediterranean diet um, website. So the top 10 cookbooks for the Mediterranean diet or, um, you know, the top five ways that you can use lemon in your cooking, something like that. You can do the same thing if you have a beauty brand or a skincare brand or a, or a coaching practice or, you know, any kind of thing, any kind of, um, topic that you talk about, come up with those kind of, they call them listicles. Um, because you're listing out things and you're coming up with a number and people, they see the headline and they see, you know, top seven, reasons why something and they know what they're getting into they know oh I'm only gonna have to read seven things I can scan this really quickly and uh, a lot of people it's, it's just clickbait for people they like to click on things that have a number on them like that the other types of uh, articles that you could write that are popular are reviews so if you are um, like if you do have a cooking blog for example you can do a review on a new kitchen tool or something like that or something that you've discovered um, that you started using and it's really making your life easier. Or if you discovered a new essential oil that you're using in your skincare, um, you can do a review of the places where you can get them or um, the containers that you use for your creams or something like that. You can do reviews about all kinds of things or do reviews about like, um, like if you make uh, shampoo for natural hair or um, you know some kind of hair care products, you can review other products that are on the market and you know maybe not bash them and say that yours is so much better but the popular things in your niche that people would want to be reviewed um, uh, they're always popular people are always looking for other people's opinions on something before they purchase or a reason why they want to seek out another kind of product um, so review articles are always popular another way um, is to do unboxing videos so um, you see a lot of them on YouTube where people will be like, I got the newest iPhone, I'm going to open the box and show you everything. And people are fascinated by the whole process of unboxing. But if you make your own products, you're not going to want to unbox other people's things. Um, but if you have a, a monthly subscription box or something, you can do a little unboxing and showing what, what the people are missing out who haven't bought it. Um, or you can show um, sort of a reverse unboxing of how you're packing up a, po a package for someone or um, how you're wrapping up your soaps or you know, how you're labeling your creams or something. People are fascinated by all those little background details, especially if you have a small business where they know it's handmade. They want to know, they want to see the handmade process. Um, so there are all kinds of things that you can put into uh, blog posts. Um, and another popular one would be to interview someone in your industry. So to interview um, a skincare expert or to interview a, a celebrity chef or, you know, something like that. So it's another way that people um, 
when they know what they're getting into when they read an article, if they see if there's an interview with someone, they kind of know what they're getting into. They know that it's going to be sort of a question and answer format, and if they don't have a lot of time, they can scan the article, and they're not uh, committing to reading like a whole book on something. You know, so blog posts are supposed to be kind of short pieces. You want them to be at least 400 words long so that they can capture an audience for the search engine optimization, because anything less won't really kind of register on a search engine's radar. Um, up to like a couple thousand word articles where you want to have, you want to really build up an authoritative article on something. Um, so that just gives you a few ideas of the types of articles that you can create. Um, let me take a sip of water. And again, if you have any questions along the way, please put them in the side, uh, in the comments section, and I will answer them as we go along. Uh, another great way to, what helps me come up with article ideas, um, is to create an edit editorial calendar. So the first thing I do when I have a calendar, a brand new calendar, is I open it up and I, I look at all the holidays and I mark off any important dates for me. Um, if there's an anniversary of your company, you know, mark that off and you can have a blog post about it being the anniversary. Or if, you know, Valentine's Day is important to your brand or... St. Patrick's Day or you know St. Joseph's Day or Christmas or Thanksgiving and those kind of things. Halloween is always really big for product makers. Um, just mark off those things on your calendar and you know what you're going to write about that month. And you kind of want to um, go from the date that you want to publish something like that and kind of work backwards. So if you know if you're going to do um, something for Halloween, um, that you can't put all your Halloween stuff up on Halloween or the day before. You know, you want to do it people lead up to Halloween like, you know, months in advance, you know, so you can start posting about that kind of stuff um, a couple weeks before, even a month before, depending on like what is on brand for you. Um, and the same thing for Valentine's Day. If you're offering products that, pe that you want people to buy for Valentine's Day, you can't post that kind of thing, you know, two days before Valentine's Day or on Valentine's Day. You kind of got to backdate it and start getting people prepared for Valentine's Day and reminding them that it's coming, get them to buy early so there's time for the product to ship. Um, and if you're a service um, provider, you know, you can kind of lead up to like, you know, how to get through the stress of the holidays, things like that. Um, and all that kind of stuff needs to happen in advance. So it's a great idea to buy yourself a calendar, mark things off, because calendars are a great way to come up with ideas as well. As you see, um, the things that are coming up, um, like spring is coming or fall is coming, and you know you see it on your calendar. You can start writing a, a fall post already. You know the leaves are already starting to change a little bit, or where I am, and and uh, I think that fall is going to come early. So I might start preparing my fall content now from my blog. Um, and then there are always those um, those cute little kind of calendars that you can buy that are like the holiday a, a day calendars. You know where it's National Donut Day or it's International Bike Riding Day, and you know you can go through those kind of calendars and see if anything retain, uh, pertains to your brand and mark those off and celebrate those as well. So if you make soaps in the shape of donuts, you know of course you're going to want to celebrate National Donut Day, and you can start preparing blog posts for things like that. Um, so I hope that gives you an idea as well. Um, so let's see what else I have here. Um, when you do come up with an idea for a blog post, I would like to suggest that you start creating outlines for them. So, you know, you might want to start planning several blog posts in advance um, and start sketching them out because it, it, when you start building an outline, then you start adding a little information to it. You start adding a little more, a little more information as it comes along and suddenly you have yourself a blog post. Um, and building an outline will keep you from wandering off topic as well. So. When you do come up with a topic, think of like the three points you want to make, write them down, and then start filling in the information for them, and uh, don't wander off of that topic. You know, don't start writing about something else in the middle of it. Um, and uh, if you do think that there's something else that pertains to that that you want to start writing about, make it a second blog post, you know, and um, if you're writing about lavender and all of a sudden you're like, you know what lavender mixes really well with, and you, know, you start talking about other essential oils, save it for another post. Write your post about lavender and make another post about things that mix really well with lavender. It gives you a second blog post. Um, another thing to do is to look at your competition. So you don't want to ever copy your competition, but it's a great way to find ideas for a blog post to see what your competition is doing. Um, and then another thing to do is to read your competition's blog post and then look in their comments section and see what kind of questions people are asking them. Um, what did they miss in the article that they wrote, you know, or what kind of um, topics 
did it spur discussion about? Um, and maybe you can find blog post ideas in other people's comments. So if you see that your competitor wrote a really interesting blog post about um, summer coming or whatever, you know, see, start thinking about like, I could do that too. How could I make it better? You know, how could I not copy them, but how could I um, make it relate to my brand and make it even better than their post? And then that's when you look in the comments and things, well, people really had a lot of questions about you know, such and such, you know, I'm really going to explain that in mind so that people don't have that question or, you know, pull something like that out and make an entire blog post about it. So looking at your competition, being inspired by them, seeing what they're missing, um, uh, seeing what they're good at, seeing what they're not so good at and kind of fill that gap of what you think is missing from them is another great way to get uh, ideas for blog posts. Another thing to do, um, and hopefully I'm not going too fast, so let me know if you have any questions, because <laughs> once I start talking, I start talking a blue streak. Another thing to do is to look for trending topics. So see what's happening in the news, um, see if it relates to you in some way, relates to your brand. You don't want to start talking about, um, you know, politics or religion or things like that that are really polarizing for people. But if you do have a brand that's very environmental, you might want to talk about the burning of the rainforest or something like that. Um, or if you have a, a brand that's vegan, you might want to talk about new new studies that have come out about vegan lifestyle and what that means for your health. Um, or um, if you do have a skincare brand and you use certain essential oils, um, you might want to talk about um, the scarcity of some essential oils and how it, you know it's hard to really get rosewood these days or things like that. You know, like because we can always find lavender, but some of the more exotic ingredients sometimes they become limited and. Um, you might want to talk about the sustainability of things like that. So look at topics that are trending in the news or um, you know current events that are happening within your industry and they can give you ideas for blog posts as well. Um, so another, really the final one um, is to just ask the people who are your readers on your blog posts. You know, um, like I, when I set up this Facebook Live today, I'm like, all right, I want to do a Facebook Live. I like to do them, you know, every so often. Um, what should we talk about today? We have done a lot of topics in the past, um, but we always have new, new people who have joined the group. And um, so I just put a poll out there and asked people and, uh, you know, it took the top two topics. So sometimes it just pays to ask, you know, you know, I, I, I blog every Monday, you know, is there anything that you really want me to talk about? Or is there any topic that I haven't covered or anything you want me to go more in depth to? And uh, a lot of times people can give you some really good ideas that you haven't thought of yourself. So when coming up with ideas for blog posts, just look for inspiration everywhere. Um, you know, look at magazines, look at uh, television shows and news programs or um, just out in nature. Take a walk in nature and maybe it'll inspire you to write a blog post about something. Look at local events that are going on in your area. Maybe you can be um, uh, a guest at some place or, you know, just go to visit something in your area that could be on topic for your brand and you can write a whole blog post about that. So just look for inspiration all around you. Um, magazines and TV shows and like, like the morning shows are sort of magazine style shows. They're a great way to get ideas for blog posts because you see a segment that might really relate to you and you think, you know what, I could turn that into a blog post. You know, I can do my own research on this topic and, and be inspired by that and get a blog post out of something like that. Um, so if you have a blog, you have, you know, you started it for a reason, you have something to say. Um, so um, think about the brand that you are trying to support or the kind of people that you are trying to attract and, and think about what would be of interest to them and what would really relate and make your brand stronger or really help to explain your brand in people's eyes. And they're the kind of things that you want to write about. And also, um, when you do write your blog posts, have some kind of call to action in them. Like even if it's not, you don't, um, you don't always want to be selling in your blog post. So you don't want to always every week be saying, you know, here's my new product, here's this product, here's this product, buy that. You want to talk about other things. They they say there's an 80-20 rule to where 80% of the time you're either informing them or entertaining them or giving them some kind of beneficial information. The other 20% of the time you can sell. You know, people won't be that interested if you're always trying to sell them something. Um, but you can put a call to action on all your blog posts. So even in the posts where you're not selling something, if you want them to join your mailing list, just say that right in your blog post. You know, if, you, if you're if you enjoying this content, don't forget to sign up for my newsletter and you'll never miss out on anything that I post. Or if you want 
to simply spark a discussion on a topic, you know, write that in, in your uh, blog post as well. You know, like, I want to hear from you, put it in the comments below. What do you think is better, lavender or, you know, Ilang Ilang or, you know, um, whatever happens to pertain to your topic um, and try to get them to discuss amongst themselves. So you start trying to build a community. So they're not just reading, ingesting and going away. And they're not just talking to you and asking you questions. They start talking amongst each other and that's where the magic really happens. So it's really just a learning process. You know, you're not going to get everything right immediately. No one starts out as this power blogger, you know, like, but um, doing it consistently will help you get better. Um, and you know, just be easy on yourself. If you wrote a blog post and like nobody read it, you know, it's, we all start that way. We all have, you know, we all start our newsletter subscription list with two people on it, you know, and one is our mom or something like that, you know, but slowly but surely you will start to build up people. You'll start to build up an audience. You'll start to get more interaction on your blog posts. You'll start to get better at it. You'll start to be more comfortable yourself at doing it. You'll start finding your voice and really knowing the kind of things that you want to talk about. Um, it just takes practice and like anything, it, it practice makes perfect. And, uh, the most important thing is to just get started. So, you know, don't let yourself have the excuse that I don't have time this month. Just schedule it in like you would anything else. You know, you're probably scheduling in, I have to make soap on this day. You know, schedule in, I have to blog post this day. You know, I have to write a blog post. Or, you know, today I have to be at this live event. That's great. Um, make a blog post about the live event, <laughs> either the before or after, or how great it was, um, and then just kind of tack that on to some of the things that you're doing for that day. So just schedule it into your calendar um, that you need to do this, and uh, and do it consistently. Do it at least once a week. Pick a day and try to do it on the same day every week, because uh, that really helps people know what to expect of you and to build up a trust factor. Like I know that every Monday, you know, so-and-so is going to post today and I'm going to go check out what they're reading. So sometimes they will come seeking out you instead of you always have to push your content out to other people. Um, so that is my whole spiel on what to write about. <laughs> so let me know if you have any questions about that before we move on to the next topic. So I'm going to take another sip of water. So nice to see people here live. Um, so just say hello if you're here. I can see that there's more people here than I've said hello. And I just want to say hi to everyone. Because the next topic is all about building an audience. And we've touched on that a tiny bit with what you're blogging about. Um, so if there's no questions. Let me scroll down because actually there may be questions. Just started a blog. Oh, hi, Sharon. Um, and hi, Dr. Sharon. <laughs> we have two Sharons here. Hello from Arizona. Hello, Vanessa. What's the least number of blog posts to put out, say, in a week? Uh, I would say it really depends on your brand. I, I like to blog once a week. Um, but if you really can't commit to once a week, you know, do once every two weeks or once a month. At least you're doing something on a consistent schedule. Um, I wouldn't try to do something more than once a week. You know, if you're trying to write every day, you're just going to burn out and and uh, you know, and just not have enough to talk about. Uh, I would say that you should be on social media every day. So you can write a blog post once a week, and then for the rest of the week, promote it on uh, different uh, social medias. You know, so if you publish your blog posts on you know Saturdays or something, you know, you want to maybe push it out to Twitter immediately so people see that it's there, and then maybe the next day you want to take a little snippet of it and put it on. Uh, Instagram, you know, you can build your own little quote with something that you said in your blog post. <coughs> Excuse me. And maybe you want to put it on your Facebook page, you know, on another day. And you can keep reposting, uh, re-promoting your older blog posts as well. So spend a lot of the time promoting your blog posts. And uh, I would say try to commit to once a week. No more than that. And then, you know, maybe when you promote that blog post, Think about six weeks from now, re-promoting that blog post if it still uh, pertains to what you're doing, you know, if it's still evergreen content. Um, of course, if it's timely, you don't want to keep promoting something that was about a specific event that you're going to. Um, but if you're writing something about, <clears throat> you know, something about your ingredients or something like that, that's going to be evergreen content that you can keep promoting and promoting over again. Or maybe you can even go back to an old blog post and update it. Um, hi, Cassandra. Oh, Marilyn says she has to leave and she'll watch the replay. That's great, Marilyn. It's okay. <laughs> she 
Teresa, you're still here. Thank you, Teresa. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about building an audience. When I talk too much, I have to keep drinking, so bear with me. So um, when you first start a blog, you know, it's like crickets, right? You start a blog and you're just like looking to see how many people are going to read it and nobody's there. <laughs> We've all been there. The first thing you have to do is just get the word out. You know, tell your family, tell your friends that you started a blog or that you put a new blog post out. Ask them to tell everyone they know, tell everyone you know. Go on social media and, and tell everyone that's following you on social media. Just get the word out yourself. But beyond that, you can look for relevant Facebook groups um, that have something to do with your topic. You know, maybe they're not directly related to your topic, um, but maybe it's something that could complement your brand. Or you know, if you make a certain, if you make vegan skincare, for example, you might want to join different skincare groups on Facebook. And you can't always just promote yourself in those groups, but you can become a, a frequent contributor, so people know you and. And you can be helpful in there and where people want to seek out and learn more about you and they'll find your blog and you know, maybe you can casually mention that you have a blog. It depends on the group's rules because some people run groups where they don't want you to promote at all and some people don't mind or some people will set up a certain day and say, okay, every Tuesday everyone can promote whatever their latest project is. You know, So look for groups where you can join uh, with like-minded people or look for groups of the where you think that your target audience will be. So if you do make skincare for people with eczema or something like that, look for, I, mean, I don't know if there's eczema skincare groups on Facebook, but there are probably um, skincare groups on Facebook where people are looking for answers to their, to their problems. I mean, maybe there are. And definitely if you're a coach, there's all kinds of groups that you can join on Facebook. Relationship groups or business groups or, you know, different things like that. And uh, just be active in them. You know, don't <clears throat> join them with the intent of just pushing your content out there. Join them with the intent of becoming a member of that community and being active in it. And you'll start attracting people to you as well. Because when you start, you know, making intelligent comments in there or being helpful with people, they're going to want to know, going to want more from you, really. Um, so... Joining groups is a great way to do that. Um, also, just find the right social media platform that works for you. So you don't want to be on every social media platform. You know, you might not need to be on Snapchat, you know, because Snapchat is really for young kids. But if you are making a brand, you know, say you make hair accessories for young girls or something, Snapchat is probably the way to go for you. But um, if you're doing anything, you know, above the age of 20, you probably don't need to worry about Snapchat. Um, Instagram is a great platform for promoting your content. Facebook is a great place for promoting your content. But the crowd on Facebook is really a little bit older. So if you are trying to reach kids, you can ignore Facebook, you know, because they are probably on Instagram and Snapchat and some of the other social media platforms that are available. Um, if you have a very visual brand, you know, Instagram is a great way to go, and so is Pinterest. You know, so if you do have a cooking blog, Pinterest is excellent for those kind of things. People go there all the time looking for recipes. Or if you have a, a DIY blog, people are always on Pinterest looking for home projects or crafty things to do. Or um, if you are in the wedding industry, you know, if you make um, I don't know, hair accessories for brides or something like that, you know, Pinterest is, is the perfect way to go. Um, but I kind of think that uh, Instagram and Facebook sort of work almost for everybody. So you might want to concentrate on those two first or you know, if you really do have a visual brain, you might want to concentrate heavily on, on Pinterest. Uh, it really matters which one is for you, but don't try to spread yourself across all of the different social media platforms. You know, find one or two that really work for you, and then maybe add another one later if you realize that you're getting a lot of interest um, through Instagram or something, you might want to try moving into Pinterest or something like that. Um, and another thing um, is to start using video. Um, we're moving more and more toward a, a video watching society and everyone is glued to their phones and they're constantly watching videos on their phones. Um, and you know, it, it's just the way that people consume content now. And a lot of times if you type something into Google, the results that you get, you'll see them pushing video content to you as well as, as blog posts. Um, they don't have to be anything really long. You know, you don't have to film your entire blog post. You can do snippets of your blog post or you can, you can record a blog post. Um, I mean, you can record a video and then 
use the transcript of that video as your blog post. And then you can use, so you can have, be hitting kind of two mediums at the same time. So if you have a YouTube channel, you can make a video, um, put it up on YouTube, and then, you know, take the, the script that you used for that video and the transcript of it and make it into a blog post. And then maybe pull a quote or two out of it and, uh, you know, put that on Instagram or, um, or take um, just like one little 15 second clip from that video and put it on Facebook, you know. So start thinking about trying to get um, incorporating video into your brand in some way. And if you don't want to be on camera, face it towards your product. You know, there you don't always have to, a lot of people are uncomfortable putting themselves on video. And when you hear the way your voice sounds when it's recorded, it always sounds strange the first time you hear it. And, um, you know, we start thinking about how our hair looks. And, you know, the people who are watching the video don't really care about that. They just want the information that you're providing. Um, and they're not being as, um, you know, we scrutinize ourselves much more than um, the people who are watching our videos do. So don't be too afraid of video. Maybe start small. Shoot a little couple things with your phone. Maybe do an Instagram story, something like that. Um, and start using that. And it, it's another way to attract an audience because there are a lot of people out there who are just looking for video content. And they don't really want to read a blog post. They just want to hear you um, or show, have you show them something or have you tell them something where they want to watch it in a visual way. Um, so think about that. Another way to build your audience um, is to collaborate with other people who are um, complementary to your to your brand. You know, so uh, if you make soap, maybe you want to collaborate with someone who makes shampoo, um, and you can you maybe write a joint blog post together or um, do a video together to where you know half of it is on your channel, half of it is on their channel, um, or you do a, a joint blog post together to where. Um, you know, it's written by the both of you, both of you, and part of it is on your channel, a part of it, I mean, on your blog, a part of it is on their blog. Um, or you can maybe do a, a Facebook Live together and then send people back to your individual blogs. Uh, or you can ho host a contest together. You know, something like that is a great way to attract people. Um, or just interview someone. If there's a, a, a person in your industry who is much bigger, a much bigger blog and more successful than you, maybe you want to ask them if you could do an interview with them or something um, to where they're proud to show it on their channel. So you're getting some eyes on your smaller channel. Um, and then you're showing that your people are giving them good, um, a good topic to watch on your channel, on your blog, um, showing this other more successful person than you. Um, so no, you don't necessarily want to pick exactly the same topic. You don't want to interview another soap maker maybe, but, um, or if you're a coach, you know, you might be a business coach, but maybe you want to bring in someone who's, uh, a, someone who works with people with anxiety because business people, you know, get anxiety. Um, so they're sort of complementary topics that go together. Um, you know, or maybe skincare and perfume or something, you know, and you, you may both be using the same kind of essential oils, but you're using them di in different ways. You know, there are different ways that you can collaborate with people. So you're getting in front of their audience, they're getting in front of your audience, and it's a great way to build a new audience from that um, without kind of stealing from them because they're not the exact same topic. So does that make sense? Um, and also, um, you could try doing something uh, to where you host a free challenge. You know, maybe you host a you know, a one week self care challenge or something like that where it's a little free thing that you do and it attracts people on Facebook. You, maybe you can post an ad or just ask people to spread the word and um, start talking in the groups that you belong to saying, you know, hey, I'm doing this challenge, you might want to join it. And it might have something that, to do that sort of relates back to your product, um, but it's something that's good for them. You know, maybe you're a fitness coach and you're doing a free five day uh, push up challenge or something like that or learning how to do a plank or something like that. And, um, every day you come on just for a minute or two and you gather an audience and it's a fun way to get people to start um, getting interested in your brand and, and starting to like just get to know you better and, and uh, realize that you know, you're not just this um, topic putting on information and selling things that you're building a whole community and they get to see your personality and, and how the different ways they can work with you and what you have to offer and it's a new way to it's a good way to introduce new kinds of content to your people so think about trying to host some kind of you know uh, just a little bit of a challenge you know it doesn't have to be a big 30-day challenge or something it could be one week it could be a three day three day challenge or something um, but it's another good way to attract new people I would say as as a last resort 
you could use advertising. Um, it can be really expensive to start buying Facebook ads and things like that. It can be very effective for some people, um, but uh, you really have to know how to target for that. And I would think that there are a lot of free opportunities in the beginning when you're just starting out or when you haven't really blogged in a while or maybe your um, blog has plateaued and you're trying to like get your audience to the next level. Um, there are a lot of free things you can do in the beginning before I would suggest buying any kind of ads. Um, but you can also do that if you want to. Um, Another thing to do is to try to get uh, featured somewhere, you know, so maybe there is a popular podcast that you'd like to listen to that um, has something to do with your industry and maybe you can kind of float yourself as uh, maybe they, somebody they want to talk to. You, maybe you have a new topic um, that, you're, uh, that you've really done a lot of research on and you want to share it with their audience and people like that are always looking for people to feature on their podcasts. Um, so it might be a great way um, for you to get it in front of another audience as well. Or maybe you can um, actually try to write uh, an article for a magazine. You know, if there's like a magazine for your industry or something that you think your target mod audience would be interested in, like Real Simple or something like that. You know, I could see any kind of, um, any kind of self-care brand or skincare brand or even home decorating brand, you know, those kind of, there are all kinds of magazines out there and uh, they're always looking for content. A lot of magazines are just put together with freelance content. There might be a couple of staff writers that write the big stories, but there are a lot of smaller articles in magazines um, that are in sort of the front of the magazine where you'll see like a one page or a half page thing and, you know, start pitching ideas to magazines and seeing if they bite and that could get you a lot of attention. Um, or maybe even just a more popular blog. You might want to write a guest blog post someplace else. Um, where they allow you to, in your little bio that you write, uh, they allow you to link back to your blog post. Um, so it's another great way of gaining an audience by sort of capturing someone else's audience and offering them something that they didn't really think to offer themselves. You know, you need to come up with ideas. You can't just say, hey, can I be on your podcast? Or, hey, can I be in your magazine? You have to come up with ideas of what that topic would be and pitch yourself. And uh, you never know what could happen. I've done it myself in the past where I've, I've, um, I've post I've done guest posts for different th for different uh, publications that weren't sort of exactly my topic, but my topic pertained to them because they were they had a much broader idea of what their topics were about, and uh, you know it it brought like you know dozens of people who subscribed to my newsletter from that. Uh, so that's a great way to uh, build your audience as well. Um, let me see what else I have here for you. Um, I talked about reusing your posts to repurpose your content. So, um, like I said, you want to do a lot of promotion as well as just blogging. So when you do write a blog post, um, just quote yourself. You know how people are always putting famous quotes from people on uh, Instagram and places like that or on Facebook. You know, go into something like Canva where you can build a slide and pull a, a quote of your, from yourself out of your blog post and, uh, and put that on your social media and then link back, you know, say link in bio back to the blog post and uh, get yourself out there. Um, so promotion is key. Um, and the best way really to attract people is to be authentic and to be the living representation of your brand. Um, so if you are a relationship coach, you know, you don't want to be you know, talking about your breakups all the time because <laughs> that's not going to help you. You need to be someone who is good at relationships. Um, and, you know, if you're a financial advisor, you know, you don't want to be a financial advisor who's in debt, who wants to take um, financial advice from somebody like that. You know, so if you are a skincare brand, you know, you want to use your own skincare and, you know, talk about, like, you know, what it's done for your skin. It would be the living representation of your brand, and that's the best way to attract an audience. So I think that is all I have for you today. So let me check to see if there are any more comments or questions. Um, now is the time to ask them. Um, and if, if you come up with anything that you want to ask later, if you think of something later, just put it in the comments here. I will check back later and see if there are any um, other questions. Um, but I don't see any right now. Let me see if I can refresh. Thank you for sticking with me because this ended up being 40 minutes long. Once I get going, man, I can't stop. Um, okay, I don't see any more questions. So thank you to everyone who has joined me live and uh, share this with your friends <laughs> so we can get the word out about Blog Your Brand. And uh, check back on Sunday because I'm going to have a special announcement on Sunday about the group. And uh, 
Let me know if you have any questions, and I hope this helps. And uh, if you have any ideas, too, you think if I miss something, you have some ways that you've built your audience, just share it with the group because we need to learn from each other. That's the whole point of the group. So thank you, and I will see you again soon. Bye.